My name is Chef Michael Montgomery from the Culinary School of the Rockies in Boulder. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make one of my favorite desserts and hopefully your favorite desserts, flourless chocolate cake. In this first segment, we're going to be number one, melting chocolate, whipping egg whites, and then I'm going to show you how to properly fold those whipped egg whites into your chocolate base. As you can see, I have a bain-marie set up. So I have a little bit of simmering water in the bottom of the saucepan. I'm going to place a bowl above the simmering water. This is a really nice, gentle way to melt down your chocolate. In this bowl, I have 65% chocolate pistoles, meaning 65% cocoa solids in the chocolate. When you put your bain-marie on top of your simmering water, you want to make sure first and foremost that your water is not touching the base of your bowl. So I lift my bowl up and make sure I'm actually not floating in water. If I were to be floating in water, that is direct contact with the water below and that's no longer a nice gentle way to melt chocolate. I crack my egg through my clean hand over one bowl. Once I see that I have a clean egg white, a clean egg yolk, meaning no blood, nothing is looking strange. This becomes my yolk bowl. This becomes my white bowl. And I will return to this bowl for the cracking of the next egg. When you're cracking eggs, one gentle tap on the counter is all you need to do. As you can see, our chocolate pistoles have begun to melt on their own. At this point in time, I'm actually going to remove it from the simmering water below and get rid of this. Those pistoles have melted down into what looks simply like velvet. Now that our chocolate's looking beautiful, I'm going to incorporate our room temperature butter bit by bit into the chocolate. If this butter were too cold, we would most likely shock the chocolate, forcing it to break. I'm not concerned, the, the butter is room temperature, the chocolate should melt it down quite beautifully. I'm focusing on scraping the sides of my bowl. I don't want to leave chocolate sitting up on the sides of the bowl where there's an excessive amount of heat too long. Once again, it could force or cause the chocolate to break. Now that our butter has almost completely melted into our chocolate, we are going to add a pinch of salt and I am using sea salt because it has a wonderful um, ability to the flake melts right down into the chocolate versus a hard table salt. And I'm slowly going to start incorporating our egg yolks one at a time. Once again, I would never want to dump all of our egg yolks quickly into the chocolate. I'm concerned number one about the egg yolks being a different temperature and causing the chocolate to break. And also, if the chocolate were too warm and we were to incorporate all of our raw egg yolks, you could easily scramble the eggs. We will transfer into a larger steel bowl. This is going to give the chocolate base an opportunity to cool and to slightly thicken before we incorporate our egg whites. And we are going to whip our egg whites starting on medium speed and I will slowly increase the speed to high to incorporate as much air as possible as quickly as I can. When our egg whites start to get a little foamy, I slowly start to sprinkle in our white granulated sugar. Just a bit of sugar at a time. I'll even increase the speed at this point in time So we have gone from a soft peak to a peak that is actually standing a little more erect. That is called a stiff peak, telling me I can now proceed with the folding. The first step of incorporating egg whites into whatever type of base you have, this happens to be chocolate, is called sacrificing. This sacrificing stage is allowing us to lighten our chocolate base which means this lightened chocolate base will handle the remaining egg whites 
and we will not deflate all of the air out of the egg whites. Folding. Larger spatula helps. I am turning the bowl at the same time I am scraping the sides of the bowl. This is actually making sure I get everything that is collected up on the side of the bowl down. Also, this motion is forcing me to go below our heavy chocolate base and turn it over or fold it on top of the whites. I'm not pushing the whites down through the chocolate. When your whites get to this stage, and you can still see a few streaks left in the chocolate, I know I can proceed and fold in another spatula full of my whipped whites. I'm very pleased at how lofty our mixture is looking. If you reach this point and your mixture has no loft, you are probably going to have a pretty dense cake. Yes, this is a flourless chocolate, chocolate cake. However, the egg whites give this flourless chocolate cake a wonderful texture. It's a shame to lose that by improperly folding in your whites. I'm going to gently transfer our gorgeous chocolate base into our prepared springform pan. All I've done is put a piece of parchment paper in the bottom and buttered the sides. At this point in time, I just want to very delicately level out our batter without taking too much air. Instead of picking up the springform pan and slamming it down on the counter to do this, I'm using an offset spatula and I'm barely applying any pressure because I do not want to take out any of that precious air that we just worked so hard to incorporate. Our oven is waiting for us at 350 degrees. Depending on the size of the cake, your cook time is going to vary. I would imagine a cake this size is going to take only about 25 minutes.